Hey, it's Rav from Everyday Investor. This show is designed to help us grow our money. You see, we take our precious time, we go to work, we get a paycheck in order to eat, in order to provide. But imagine a life where money could make us money. We could take that time and we could spend that time with friends, family, engaging in a purpose greater than yourself. That is what this show is all about, teaching us how money makes money. Uh, whenever you're offered any type of investment opportunity, you always want to ask four questions just to start. Number one, what is the return on investment? Two, when do I get that return along with the money I put in? Three, what is the minimum investment amount needed? And four, what is the risk, the worst case scenario? Super excited about today's show. We're going to be talking to my good friend. Wait for it. We'll be right back. Coming up, we talk to my buddy Kyle Ford, mortgage expert, investor expert, and he's going to teach us how we can maximize our investments. It's been a busy year. Uh, lots of people taking advantage of lower interest rates, uh, looking at those penalties and just taking the time to run the numbers and say, hey, this makes sense to break. Uh, this makes sense to change my debt structure on my property and potentially tap into some more equity. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique, ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom-tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today. Canada's mortgage choice. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back. We're going to be talking to my good friend, Kyle Ford. He's going to be teaching us how to maximize our investments. Before we do that, let's go to our uh, stock expert, Omar Khan. Over to you, Omar. Thanks, Rav. Omar Khan here, guys, with the market, weekly market review. Uh, markets were pretty good last week. The TSX was almost up 1%, S&P, NASDAQ up around half a percent each. The reason is because jobs gro growth came at a moderate level. It wasn't too high, it wasn't too low. So obviously we all know that without jobs, people can't buy stuff. And that's what essentially propels corporate profits, people buying goods and services. Now the jobs growth wasn't too strong and wasn't light. It was kind of in the middle. And the reason the market liked that is because then there's no worries about inflation in your future. You don't actually have to worry about the Fed doing drastic measures like uh, you know tapering measures. Uh, so the market viewed that as a positive and propelled forward. Also, the market's thinking corporate earnings are going to be better because the job market's slowly coming back online. It's getting close to pre-pandemic levels. So that's what's really propelled the market in the last week. Uh, let's see what happens going forward. Let's keep an eye on that jobs number. Let's keep an eye on the inflation number, okay? Thanks. Back to you, Rev. Thanks, Omar. Always great to learn from you. My man, Kyle Ford, how are you? I'm great, Rev. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing great, but I don't know if I can focus on you with that backdrop. I wish I was uh, at that beach, I'll tell you that. Absolutely. I'll meet you there. <laughs> soon and very soon, my friend. It looks like we're heading in the right direction, so hopefully things will be uh, opened up and uh, we can uh, head to the beaches. But, um, dude, I mean, so many people uh, talk about what you're doing. Um, I have so many uh, friends, family that are contacting you. Uh, what's it been like here in the uh, first kind of quarter um, of 2021 when it comes to mortgages and even myself? I mean, I paid, I, I don't know why, for whatever reason, for the first time in my life, I uh, got myself into a fixed mortgage like two, three years ago. And now I know why I've never done that before. I paid, I mean, you walked me through it. I paid 25, 30 grand to break it just because it made that much sense in the bigger picture. Um, what are you seeing out there in the last two, three months here of 2021? Yeah, you're, it, uh, it's busy. Uh, it's busy, busy, busy. If you're looking for a career in appraisals or underwriting, uh, there's lots of people looking for help there. Uh, but in the mortgage side, uh, it, it's, been a, it's been a busy year. Uh, lots of people taking advantage of lower interest rates, uh, looking at those penalties and just taking the time to run the numbers and say, hey, this makes sense to break. Uh, this makes sense to change my debt structure on my property 
and potentially tap into some more equity, maybe pay out some higher interest loans, or just reposition their debt to maybe pay off their mortgage faster if that's the goal. So it's absolutely been busy. Uh, new mortgage changes coming June 1st. Uh, the, the, the big scary stress test is, is going up again. I'll tell everybody what, I, what I've been telling everybody for years. I became a mortgage broker January 1st, 2018. That day's significant because that's the day the stress test came out in the beginning. So I've been dealing with this from the beginning. When the rules change, we just need to adapt. We need to find products and mortgage solutions that are going to work for us in today's lending environment. Am I excited about the stress test? I would candidly say I'm not, but uh, is there still ways and solutions around for, for clients and investors to still grow? Absolutely there is. Well, and then when things like this happen, that's when the best of the best shine, right? I mean, that's where, you know, knowledge mitigates risk. And, you know, you've been doing this for just, uh, you know, uh, a few years, but no, you haven't. You've been investing for a long time and you've in the finance sector and all that kind of stuff, right? So um, yeah. you just decided, hey, I want to do this a little bit for myself. So you help people get into better rates. You, get, you help people pull money out of their uh, properties to be able to invest you know, 9, 10, 11% all day long. That's um, right. You're, you're joint venturing with people. You've, you buy multiplexes and buildings and so on and so forth. And you take people's money and give them a great return. I mean, you're kind of doing it all. So why wouldn't you? Getting accreditation, whether it's a mortgage broker's license or a real estate license or appraiser's license, or sometimes it's just good, just, just for the knowledge, you know? And then you have it for, uh, for whenever you want. I mean, I think to have your real estate license, I think it's like, I don't know, a thousand bucks a year, a couple thousand dollars a year. So if you sell one house every five, six, seven years, you've uh, broken even. What is it at, for a mortgage broker? What are your kind of annual fees uh, to be able to get in that game? Uh, I, I think around $2,500, including your heirs and emissions insurance. Uh, generally, you're, you're, with a, you're within a, a, a banner. Uh, we're, I'm under Mortgage Alliance. So uh, about $2,500 with your insurance, your uh, professional dues and fees relatively reasonable in the grand scheme of things uh, you know there's there's lots of people looking for good good advice out there so uh, whether it's a realtor whether it's a mortgage mortgage agent uh, like you said even if that's not your specific goal educate yourself on, on how to on it and just your own personal knowledge for your own financing is going to benefit you for twenty five hundred dollars a year so or give Kyle a call yeah. Uh, like I do often. And thank you for, uh, for hearing me, you know, uh, Hey Kyle, what's this about reverse mortgages? What's this about the stress test? And, but like I said, you walk me through the numbers and I paid, uh, 20, 30,000 to break my mortgage. Um, and it was, it's worth it, um, to pay a lower rate, pull more money out, throw it into, uh, investments such as yours. Um, you wanted to, you know, we we're talking and, it's amazing. People buy investment properties. Um, it goes up in value. Someone's paying down their mortgage, um, maybe a little bit of cash flow, but that's not really why they're doing it. They're really just doing it for the appreciation and debt reduction. Um, and they put their 20% down and they, you know, I've heard people say to me just at a gathering, yeah, I'm never going to sell that property. And uh, one of the things you've taught me is that might not be the most shrewd, prudent uh, decision to make. I mean, if you want to pull money out of it, great. Um, or you might want to sell it because you talk about something called return on equity. Talk to me a little bit about what that means, return on equity. Yeah, and, and you, you said it right at the start of the show, which is that one of the first things we want to know is what is our ROI, our return on investment. And before we talk about return on equity, let's, let's identify how we calculate return on investment. We take our, the cash that we invested in, divide it against the profit that we made, whether that's cash flow, principal pay down, or appreciation. The, the important thing that uh, as an investor that we need to be doing, and I'm going to say for sure on an annual basis, but maybe even semi-annually the way the market's going, but let's go with annually. On an annual basis, we're calculating not only our initial return on our investment, but what's our annual return on the equity that we have in the property? So the, the, in their conversation that we had, Rav, I had a building that was a 10-unit apartment building that I sold because the return on equity wasn't what my initial return on investment was. 
But Do you want to go through those in, numbers? Uh, it might be. It might be. I, I kind of have another example in mind that's maybe a little bit less co less complex than that. Okay. Okay. So if, if we just do a, a a basic rental property, let's say in the outside the GTA, uh, a five hundred thousand dollar purchase price. You okay. went into Hamilton or or Brantford or Barry, five hundred thousand dollar purchase price. Okay. We're gonna have to put our twenty percent down, which is a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, and we're gonna get a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage on that. And let's say, for example, let, let's say this property uh, produces, uh, let's say, five hundred dollars a month in positive cash flow. Okay. So we're getting six thousand dollars a year annually in cash flow. Okay. The mortgage was four hundred thousand dollars. So let's say we're, we're, we're capturing about $1,000 a month on that. Uh, so that's a $12,000 principal recapture. Okay. And our appreciation, though, though we've seen higher numbers lately, I know you agree with me on this, Rob, let's be conservative and let's go with a 3% appreciation rate. Okay. Which on 500,000 would be $15,000. So if I take uh, 18 and 15, 33? Yep. So 33K on my first year, I've made 33%, yeah? That's correct. Not a bad, not a bad first year. That's a fantastic first year. Yeah. And even for example, so this, when we talk about return on equity, that means the next year, if the property appreciated 3%, the property's worth 515 and we paid down twelve thousand dollars which means our new equity position is a hundred and twenty seven thousand is that right yeah. not yeah yeah for pay down plus appreciation let's say we're spending our cash flow we're using that for our, our lifestyle expenses we, we've got 12 plus 15 our new equity position is a hundred and twenty seven thousand that we now have invested into this deal. Yeah. So yeah. now, now going forward every year, we have to be increasing our, what our initial investment was because that's the equity we have in the deal. And we have to run that against our new numbers. So what you're so, saying is, I am no longer in this deal for $100,000. I'm in this deal for 127. That's right. Now in the year one. In year one, yep. Year one. year one, the twenty-seven thousand dollars didn't come out of your pocket, but it's on it's on your net worth statement now. So you need to analyze your return on your not only your initial investment but your current equity position in the property. Yeah. Now, what we're seeing did the did properties appreciate a little bit more than three percent the last year? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they did. So that that means your first year rate of return could be substantially higher than this 33% that we talked about, but do we know that's gonna to continue to happen? Let's, let's run a year two analysis. Okay. Okay, so let, it, it, Rob, and I'll, I'll ask you this, is it fair to say that in the past year, we've seen 20% appreciation in a lot of markets around the GTA? Absolutely. Absolutely, so if we had, uh, that means our new value of the property is gonna be $600,000. Yeah. Our mortgage is going to be 388. Three eighty eight. Okay. And our, our cash flow, the rents, there was a rent freeze, so rents haven't changed here. So our cash flow is still going to be six thousand dollars a year. Yeah. We're, let's let's bump up that principal recapture just a little bit because as our amortization goes down, our principal recapture goes up. Let's let's put the principal recapture at fourteen thousand. We were at twelve on the last one at fourteen thousand. Fourteen k. Yeah. And, and then appreciation. So now this is where do we know that it's going to go up twenty percent again next year? No, we don't. So in terms of a projection. Let's, let's, for the sake of this, let's even make this look better than, let's go to 5% on this one. Okay, so 5%, so, 5 so 30 grand? Yes. 5% of this? Yes. Okay, so 30K. 
All right, so now I'm adding up appreciation and pay down. Yep, six, and, and uh, if we want a total ROI, so we're gonna add all three. The yeah, 6, so 000, 50, 000. 50, 000. Now we need to divide that by our current equity position, not our original cash investment. Yes. So our current equity position is actually 212,000, not 127. Oh, because of the next year. Because of the next year. So how do you, you got the 212 from? The current value? Yes. Minus the current mortgage, which is our new equity position. Okay, so now I have here um, 50K divided by the 212. Yep. And so that now is just over 25%. 20, 23.6%. Sorry, below 23, 23. So I've gone 10% less. Kyle, I love this. We got to take a break. Um, and let's get back in the numbers. But on the first year, 33%. On the second year, I'm only making 23% because of the equity that was created. I didn't put it out of my pocket, but it's still mine. And so and then therefore I have to ask myself, am I happy with 23% if I know I can make 35, 40%, so on and so forth. We're talking to a very smart guy, Kyle Ford. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. At Theta Training, our goal is to help you achieve financial freedom by teaching you the foundations of trading stock options. Join our growing community. Learn through our live streamed weekend course or develop your skills at your own pace online. Understand how the stock market works and how you can use the options market to earn additional income, achieve financial freedom, and live life on your terms. Let us help you build your empire. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. I'm talking to the mortgage guru specialist, uh, Kyle Ford. He's been teaching us the concept of return on equity as opposed to return on investment. With an example that he uh, gave, we bought a $500,000 property. We put 20% down. Um, when you look at appreciation, debt reduction, um, and cash flow, you make on the first year about 33% then we have to take that appreciation reduction cash flow because it's my money and we have to consider that as equity. So when we put that into the deal on year two, instead of making 33%, I'm making 23%. And then Kyle, in year three, it'll be even less. It may be about 20% depending on what we give ourselves for appreciation. So this is what you're saying is, listen, this is a game of prudent monopoly. It doesn't mean we have to buy and hold. We can sell if it makes more sense to sell or pull money out and buy an, another investment property. So in the, um, the building that you just sold, why did you sell it as opposed to pull money out? The, so it was a commercial property and I was limited by how much proper, how much equity I could pull out based on the rents. Got it. So I could only go up to 65% loan to value. Yeah. We're talking about a pretty substantial asset size, yeah. which meant there was a there was a large amount of money left in that deal. Yeah. When I calculated the principal recapture, the cash flow based on that 35% equity I had in the deal, my return was it, it was it was a 26% return, which uh, listen, that's a great return. But when I do my, my R5 Burr model deals, I, I'm, I'm getting 100% return or, or, or higher. So it just didn't make sense for me to leave that capital invested in a deal that was only performing at 26%. So we, we made the, de the decision to, to liquidate the property and now we're moving that capital into deals that perform at a higher criteria or benchmark that our business uh, requires and demands. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's so many people that, you know, they bought a property for, you know, 350K way back when, and now their mortgage is, you know, 100K um, in an investment property. They only put down, you know, 70 grand or so, and they're really, really happy. And I sit with them and I say, yeah, but 
you've got $250,000 of equity, right? You've got $250,000 of equity when you look at this property and it goes up 3 4% and there's some mortgage pay down and a little bit of cash flow, you have to divide it against you know, what this is. And so therefore, their, their return on investment might be 12 13 14%, which is not what they thought it was. They're just so excited to have this kind of equity. So it's the same thing with your principal residence. As long as you can sleep at night, nothing wrong with pulling money out of your principal residence to make it work better for you. Right, and I think that's uh, that's where you know where people don't really kind of understand you know the concept, and you know without getting into any kind of theories, uh, conspiracy theories, and all that, Kyle. Why why do people not know about this? Is it why is there such little ed education on how to use our money, uh, money that God's given us, to be able to grow it and multiply it? What what would you say? How do I, you know, that, that's, a tough, that's a tough question, Rob. It, it really is. And I, and I don't know why, why, why the education isn't out there um, more readily available. But what I will say is it is out there for those who are seeking it. Uh, you know, watching your show, following you on social media and connecting with other types of um, other, you know, educators in the space. Uh, there, there's, there's lots of information out there. Um, and what I would say is, and, and I have great relationships with my banking partners, so I don't want to say anything anything bad about the, the banking industry. Um, but what I would the, the, do as the banks do, not as the banks say. So do it. Do it, the banks take money, they lend it back out, they they, they live on the spread, but they tell uh, Canadians to pay your mortgage off and don't have debt. Well, the banks have debt and they're doing okay. So what if we applied the banking model? to our personal financing and instead of being a consumer of the banking product be a uh, an innovator and a user of the banking system i hope that makes sense without with keeping my tinfoil hat off so <laughs> i don't know it's 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 great i mean i don't know what a gic is right now first of all what does it stand for guaranteed income certificate investment certificate yeah. investment certificate so i don't know what a gic is but what one percent two percent on a good day. <laughs> okay, so I take my I take my hundred thousand dollars, and I put it in a GIC. Well, there's nothing wrong with that if you're fine with it. I make my one percent, which equals one thousand dollars a year. That's what the bank is paying me, um, and that's nice. But what people don't stop to realize um, is what are they doing with the hundred thousand dollars? Right, and what they're doing with that hundred thousand dollars is they're lending it out at, even if it's three percent, four percent, five percent, but even if it's at three percent, they're making the spread of two percent, but with volume, right? And then that's how the banks work. So what you've uh, been teaching me is, Rav, why don't you be the bank? Why don't you sitting on a lot of equity, whether it's investment properties, my own principal residence, whatever it is. Um, Take that money and you lend it out. So pay the bank their 3% or 2%. Today, it's ridiculous, 1.5%, even less. And, um, and then go lend it out at 10, 11%, which you're offering all the time. By the way, the deals that you offer all the time that come across my email, by the way, if you guys want to see those deals, uh, where do they go, Kyle, to be able to uh, see the deals? Yeah, info at kylefordmortgages.com. Info at KyleFordMortgages.com. Yeah, yeah and, and you're job. sending those all the time. But some of these are your own deals too, right? Where um, yeah. somebody like Rav and the viewers, we get to invest with you. That's right. That's yeah. right. No, We're no, doing no. some larger, larger projects right now. And uh, there are, are definitely times where I am the borrower in, in the projects. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I love uh, mit knowledge mitigates risk. Knowledge breeds confidence. Um, you know, it's not about knowing A to Z just knowing ABC, acting on it. Because, you know, I've been in this game. I'm, I just turned uh, uh, 50 years old. Uh, what's that? I don't look like it? Thank you. Yeah, no, you're looking I, great, Rob. Jeez. I'm just kidding. Uh, I just turned 50, and, and my first investment property was with my mom at 16. Uh, 34, 35 years of doing this, I'm still learning. Uh, so you'll never learn it all before you transact, but you should have um, enough knowledge to be able to sleep at night. 
You know, Kyle, I asked you a question uh, because some dear friends of mine were asking about it, and I was never favorable, um, although, you know, as a last resort, we may need to do it. Can you talk a little bit about reverse mortgages? What does it mean, uh, a reverse mortgage? Yeah, so in the simplest terms, any mortgage that most Canadians have had in their lifetime, they went, they went to their bank, um, they borrowed money from the bank and made a consistent monthly payment until that loan was paid off. The reverse mortgage yeah. is that you have the equity in your house and you want money paid from your house to you every month. Okay, so my house, so our parents or grandparents, they bought a house. They didn't move as much as we moved. Um, that house today is worth a million dollars and they have no mortgage, it's paid off. But they also don't have much money. Their income is almost you know, zero, a little bit pension, whatever the case is. But just for a drastic example, they've got a million dollar property paid off they don't have much income, they wanna live life. So now what are you saying? They're, they're taking the money out of the house to give to themselves? Yeah, so the, the, these, uh, any mortgage, that, going back to that uh, standard mortgage concept, is qualified based off the income. The, your lent, uh, how much money your lent is based off how much income you have. A reverse mortgage is based off your age and the equity in your home. And what they do is they, pay you monthly the equity out of your home now this is great for people who are in need there are there are many there are so many canadians that are their income is modest they have a twenty thousand dollar a year pension and a forty thousand dollar a year need they're not they're not necessarily looking to be frivolous and you know spending their money on lamborghinis and ferraris they just want a nice comfortable life and they have a ton of equity in their home but they don't have the income to access it and they don't want to leave their home. So, so they're pulling out, they're pulling out in a year, 20 grand to top them up. Top them up. Exactly. Now, what I will say is a, a reverse mortgage is absolutely a, a need in our, in our space. And, and there's a percentage of the population that I 100% believe it's the right product for. But what I would encourage many Canadians to do is meet with a mortgage agent, broker, specialist, who has a financial planning background before you retire and adjust your debt structure while your income is high so you have more options. Um, there was a, a, a gentleman, D Dave Chilton, he wrote The Wealthy Barber. He did an article on this years ago um, talking about how reverse mortgages are compound interest working against you. And I've always, that's always kind of stuck with me with these reverse mortgages. So anytime I have a, a person approaching retirement, and they're still in their high income earning years, I'm the first one saying, let's set up a home equity line of credit now. Even if you don't need it, you don't want it, you qualify for this now. Don't wait till your income's down and then you try to get this because you're not going to get what you need. And so, ba so basically what you're saying is, it's the same thing, we'll still give you $20,000, but it'll be a lot cheaper for that $20,000 as opposed to because when you borrow and then the next year's 20, 20, it's compounding, I'm losing a lot of my equity. So either get set up a line of credit, you have your kids co-sign for you, put it in their name, all yep. that kind of good stuff. Kyle, you are a wealth of knowledge. Time flies when we're having fun. Uh, show's over, I can't wait to have you on um, again, you know, in, in a few weeks because we're always learning uh, different things. If you wanna learn more from Kyle, go to everydayinvestor.com. You can see all the episodes, you can see the uh, one minute tips. Uh, he is a wealth of knowledge. Thanks, Kyle, for being on the show. Thank you, Rob. Always a pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. Without you, we would not have a show. Make sure you tune in next week. Same place, same time. Honey, love you. I'll be home soon.